morning. Happy Wednesday, guys. Great. Looking like um, maybe ending up a beautiful day in South Louisiana. I, um, I'm going to give you a little background about my um, background story, how I got into real estate, and then I'm going to talk to you about why it's possible to buy and sell in any situation that you're in. Um, hold on just a second. I'm letting somebody pass me. Um, so, um, those of you who don't know my story, let me just give you a little background. So, five years ago, I got into real estate. Um, I had been in education for 20 years. I grew up in a single family home. My mom and I got divorced when I was seven. My mom was not educated at all, which meant um, when her and my dad got divorced, there were three of us. I was the oldest. I was seven. My sister was five. My brother was, I mean, my brother was five and my sister was three. And so she chose to leave my dad. Um, she was raising us as a single mom, had multiple different jobs, all the time different jobs. Um, my mom, looking back now, was um, a quitter. Like when anything didn't go her way or the way she expected it to go, she quit. So I feel like she quit on my dad. She quit multiple jobs over and over and over again. And so I saw that growing up. She was a very cruel, unhappy, um, just vindictive person. And it's so crazy because growing up, I always knew it wasn't right. And I always knew it was not the way I ever wanted to live. And so I gravitated towards um, children whose parents seemed normal and decent and loving and all the things. And I had lots of friends and thankfully she would always allow me to go spend the night at their houses. And I gravitated towards those people. And so I surrounded myself with people that I wanted to be like and who were loving and kind and all the exact opposite of what she was. And then, so for me, because living with her was unsafe. I mean, we got beat on a regular basis. We were abused mentally, physically, everything you could think of. But school for me was the safest place to be. I loved school because it was an escape from this, this home, from this person. And so as growing up, of course, I, I thought of nothing else but to be in education. And so but the crazy thing is I didn't want to be a teacher. I always wanted to be in charge. I always wanted to be the boss. So I went to school, got my master's. Uh, got my degree in education and then got my master's quickly thereafter and then got my specialist and all the things and I was moving up the ranks and so I was a teacher for a little while I was an administrator for a good while and in my last few years I was technology supervisor and hit a brick wall when I decided that I wanted to move up and someone very important in the community told me that a woman will never be superintendent of this parish as long as this eight member board is in effect and so long story short I had 20 years in education I decided there has to be more to life than making pennies in a job where I was never going to see a promotion. And the crazy thing is, as awful as my upbringing was, I don't regret it one single bit. Because for me, it was, um, it made me so tough, so strong. It made me not afraid of literally anything. And so I feel like no, just means not right now okay um, it just means not right now there's always a way to get something done and so I when I retired from education I was scared to death about the reality of now what am I gonna do but it didn't matter because I knew I was going to figure out a way to make it work and if it didn't work I would do something else and so my first year in real estate um, was February 2019 I didn't sell my first house until June of 2019 and believe it or not because I spent so much money on marketing and advertising that first year because I wanted everyone around me to know I was no longer in education I was now a realtor I netted two negative two thousand dollars that year after all the expenses all the things how much I grossed minus all the expenses and all the bills and all the things I netted negative two thousand dollars and I remember around December of that first year telling my boys listen we're not going to have much of a Christmas this year but if you trust me and believe me I promise you the few years leading after this year will 
be better Christmases. Just trust me and believe me that this year is going to suck. I had every credit card maxed out. We were in debt up to our asses, but I knew from the first day that I got into real estate because I was able to help people reach their goals that I would be successful at it. So fast forward five years later, my God, I've closed close to 350 transactions. I absolutely love helping people reach their goals and I will always be their biggest cheerleader. Lots of times people have to sell or buy, not because they choose to, but because they have to. So there might be a death in the family. There may be an involuntary transfer for work. There may be a divorce or a separation or something. And lots of times those are not good situations to have to sell. I guarantee you, I will be your biggest cheerleader and we will get it done. There is nothing that we can't do together. That's an absolute reality. Um, and I've done it over and over and over again. I'll tell you, I got a call a few months ago from someone who had not filed their taxes. I didn't know this till later, but hadn't filed their taxes in three years. We closed on their house a couple of months ago, okay? Where there's a wheel, there is absolutely a way. The craziest thing is the guy that didn't file his taxes for three years was actually owed a refund. He actually was owed money by the IRS. Imagine that. So all those years he didn't file his taxes, he thought it's because he owed them money and was going to have to pay, all right? So remember this, if you're looking to buy or to sell, your situation is not unique. Everybody has been in your situation. If you're going through a separation, if you're going through a divorce, if a family member has died, if you're getting an involuntary transfer for work, there are so many reasons that people have to buy and or sell. And listen, if you have to sell your house in order to buy another house, or you have to sell land that you were going to build on and now you realize it's way too expensive to build, and so now you have to sell that land to buy a house, you're not alone. That happens every single day to people. So don't feel like you're out in the woods all by yourself and this situation is unique. I guarantee you, People have the same problems, the same problems, the same problems. People need to buy or sell for all the same reasons. People want to sell because they want to downsize or they want to upsize or they want to move to the country or they want to move to town or they just want to move because they don't like their neighbors. There are so many reasons to be a seller. And listen, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about your situation. Remember that. I find lots of people just care too much about what the world thinks. The world is not walking in your shoes. It doesn't matter what your parents think or your, your nana thinks or your nanny thinks or your neighbors think. It doesn't matter what they think. What matters is what, what matters to you and what's best for you and your family. So don't worry about what are people gonna say if, if we just bought or sold this house two or three years ago and now we feel like it's not, it was a stupid decision and now we need to buy or sell again. Listen, no one's walking in your shoes, no one's paying your bills, no one's business is yours except yours. So when you decide that you have to either buy or sell for whatever the reason may be, that's your decision and your decision to make, right? So know this, that if you hire me to be your realtor, you're paying me not a penny up front. I do not get paid unless we close on something. There are some realtors that will charge a fee up front. I do not, I do not. I don't know if I ever will. I know right now I, I do not, right? So if you don't buy or sell something and we don't get to the closing table, which I close 99% of my deals, okay? I absolutely close 99% of my deals. So if you hire me, the likelihood is that I am going to get paid because we are going to close. So I do not get paid until we're at the closing table and you either buy something and you get the keys to the house or I sell something for you and you give the keys to the buyer. That's how I get paid on closing day from the proceeds of the sale. So up front, I'm paying for all the professional photography, all the videography, all the marketing, the advertising. I'm paying my assistants to blast it all over the nation if it's something that we're selling and it's going to get sold. If you call me and you want to sell something and I feel like it's something that I can't sell, I'm not taking the listing. So what does that mean? 
if you have a house to sell and I drive up to it and the paint is peeling and the windows are broken and it looks like hell, I'm going to give you a to-do list, okay? And once you're done with your to-do list, you're gonna call me and say, hey, we're ready for pictures. We're going to take pictures. It's going to hit the market and it's going to sell. Now, same story. You call me, your house has peeling paint, broken windows, it looks like hell, and you don't get your to-do list done, then it's not going to get listed and I'm not going to sell it. It's as simple as that. I always want a seller to be so, so, so proud when their listing hits the market. I want you to look at that listing and go, wow, that is my place and my place has never looked that magnificent. And you're so proud of it, you wanna share it everywhere with everyone. And so what happens? It doesn't sit on the market. It goes, usually you get close to what it's listed for and it sells, it's simple as that. It's not, it's not very, um, it's not a difficult process, but if you live like um, a pig, it could be a difficult process to get it ready. But listen, I've seen some places that literally look like hell. And when I see them in pictures, I am always so, so super impressed. I find sellers always, always exceed my expectations, which I love every single time. I love working with sellers. Now, if you're a buyer and you're wanting to buy, if you've been renting a very long time and you feel like it's just a waste of money, which it is, if you're worried about the interest rates and you're currently renting, you're paying 100% interest on something you'll never own. So I don't care if the interest rate's 30%. You're paying interest right now on something you will never own. So if it's 30% and you buy it, at least in five or 10 years, when you turn around and sell it, you're gonna get your money back. Whereas right now, you are just throwing away money on a regular basis. Now there are some situations, college students, maybe newly divorced people, newly separated people, where you may need to rent. But listen, I say, unless you just really like the fact of not ever owning anything and not ever having equity for whatever that reason might be, I mean, that's absolutely your priority. I firmly believe it's throwing away money on something you will never own. And I promise you right now, your credit doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it doesn't even have to be good to qualify for a home. There are loans that are 100% financing. There are loans that are 3.5% down. Um, VA loans are 100%. There are so many ways to buy a house. So if you're thinking that you want to buy a house and you don't know where to start, give me a call or message me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. I guarantee you, I will be your biggest cheerleader, your biggest supporter, and we will absolutely get it done, all right? Where there's a wheel, there's always a way, but you need someone on your court who has closed lots and lots and lots of deals and gets it done. There will always be a way to buy or sell if you're truly in it, okay? It's not easy, it's not easy, but it is always worth it. Remember this, there are no stupid questions. If you have a question, call me, message me, text me, send me an email. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Remember this, I can show you any house, anywhere that's listed on Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, all those places. If you are pre-approved and know your budget and know your loan type and or you're a cash buyer and have proof of funds. Now, I said this yesterday and I'm going to say it again. The hugest misconception with financing a house is that you need 20% down. You absolutely do not need 20% down to buy a house, okay? And if you need a mortgage broker or a lender that has an amazing reputation, give me a call because I have lots of them that I use on a regular basis. They're amazing. Um, they do not require an upfront fee at all. They get paid when they close your loan. So they are just as motivated as I am to get it to the closing table as quickly as humanly possible. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy this beautiful, um, it's kind of overcast. It looks like it might rain. But if it rains, y'all be so safe on the roads. Take care, have a great one. And reach out if there's any way I can help you um, with real estate. Take care.